We've all seen them, consumer units that look like an absolute casserole because there's so many different brands of device in there. Maybe, if you're being really honest, you're getting that uncomfortable feeling in your stomach because you've installed a different make of circuit breaker into a consumer unit in a moment of sheer desperation. If you have, do yourself a favour and don't mention it in the comments. That is far from a safe space. But is it actually such a bad thing to do? Or are we just being a little bit paranoid? An MCB is an MCB is an MCB, right? Well, what about when we install newer protective devices from a manufacturer into an older board when we're installing additional circuits? Is that okay? Well, just before we answer those questions, if you're watching this video on any of our social media accounts, then click the link in the description to view it as part of our free training package to help you with your CPD, and you'll receive a certificate. If you're already watching it as part of that training package, then you will be sung about in myth and legend. So let's start off with the basics and go from there. The regulation that relates to all this is 526.4.203, and this isn't brand new, it's been around since the original 18th edition in 2018. It reads, the relevant part of the BSEN 61439 series shall be applied to the integration of mechanical and electrical devices and components, e.g. circuit breakers, control devices, buzz bars, into an empty enclosure or existing low voltage assembly. So let's consider that bit first. BSEN 61439 is a standard for low voltage switchgear and control gear assemblies made up of several parts. Now people get a bit confused here because they look at that reg and think, well, all my circuit breakers and other bits of kit like SPDs, contactors, timers and so on all comply with the relevant standards. So what's the problem? If a circuit breaker complies with BSEN 60898, then surely it's fine. Well, let's take an example. When installing a consumer unit like this one from CPN QDIS, the relevant part of the standard is this one, part three. Distribution boards intended to be operated by ordinary persons, or DBO. The interesting thing is that this series of documents is not aimed at the installing electrician, it's aimed at manufacturers of the equipment. And there's an important point in the scope of part three, where it says, this document does not apply to an empty enclosure, nor to individual devices and self-contained components, such as circuit breakers, few switches, electronic equipment, which comply with the relevant product standards. It describes the integration of devices, or self-contained components, or both, into a DBO or into an empty enclosure forming a DBO. So the bit of the reg we read earlier isn't saying the devices need to comply with their own standard. That's kind of obvious, and is actually stated as clearly as it can be in note one to the reg. The use of individual components complying with their respective product standards does not indicate their compatibility when installed with other components in a low voltage switchgear and control gear assembly. So for example, just because an MCB is manufactured to be SEN 60898, that does not mean that installing in a consumer unit from a different brand will make it compatible and compliant. So what does it mean? It means, as explained in the scope of part three, that when all of these devices are brought together or integrated into one unit, that the whole assembly needs to comply with BSEN 61439. So how do you make sure of that when you're installing or replacing a consumer unit? Well, the answer is you don't. Remember, BSEN 61439 is aimed at manufacturers, not installing electricians. So it's people like the good folks at CPN QDIS who make sure of this compliance. They do this by rigorous testing according to procedures laid out in that document, by connecting temperature monitors to specific places within the assembly, and running preset current values through the breakers, switchgear, and other components. This is carried out to make sure that the devices won't overheat and damage either themselves or each other when they're operating in the assembly. A circuit breaker that complies with BSEN 60898 will be tested in free air by itself, not in conjunction with other devices. So there's no guarantee that it will be okay when it's in an assembly with devices that it hasn't been tested with. A good example of this is if a consumer unit is designed to operate with the main switch having devices pressed up against one side of itself and not the other. This is how it will be tested. If someone comes along and modifies this to play, say, an SPD or a contactor at the other side, it's now not operating in circumstances it was designed to, tested to, and intended to be installed in. This is highlighted for us in the next part of regulation 526.4.203. In low voltage assemblies to the BSEN 61439 series, e.g. consumer units, distribution boards, and so on, incorporated devices and components shall only be those declared suitable according to the assembly manufacturer's instructions or literature. So unless the manufacturer has tested their assemblies and integrated other brands' devices into those tests, then they're not going to state that it's acceptable because they simply don't know that it will. But what about the other situation where you install an older device into the same manufacturer's board? Well, it's actually exactly the same outcome. When a brand overhauls the design of their protective devices and boards, they are unlikely to test the new devices in the old boards. 
therefore the relevant tests won't have been carried out and so it's likely that the manufacturer won't approve using newer devices in old boards. Of course, this is always something that you can check with the individual manufacturer. As the second part of that regulation shows, consulting the manufacturer's instructions or literature is absolutely essential to compliance. The thing to bear in mind through all of this is that if you do decide to install a newer model of breaker into an old board, or if you decide to add a device from a different manufacturer, then you haven't automatically not complied with this regulation. After all, panel builders install loads of different devices from different manufacturers into their enclosures all the time quite happily. What you have done though is taken on the role of manufacturer and it's up to you to prove that the integration of the devices from different brands complies with the relevant part of BSEN 61439 as specified in that regulation. So if something does go wrong down the line, you could be asked some probing questions in court about how you complied with the correct British standard. So unless you're happy to shoulder that particular burden, generally speaking, for consumer units, it's best to leave that compliance firmly with the manufacturer and avoid mixing devices. If you're watching on our training platform, then answer the multiple choice questions that follow and move on to the next video. If you're watching on one of our social media channels, then click the link to move over to the free training package and get yourself a certificate. Or you can watch the same video in the series right here or by clicking the link in the description to find out why we'd be interested in using a time-delayed RCD. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.